Scrolling effects. Seems like nowadays any award-winning site needs at least one of them. Today we're going to be recreating a scrolling effect for the site Happy Base, which is an award-winning site on the awards site. On its site it has plenty of scrolling effects, but specifically we're going to be looking at this one, or their logo, the scrolling, and their little things drawing on top of it. Now they use JavaScript for theirs, but we're going to try to recreate the same effects using only CSS. We're going to use a new CSS property called Scroll. It doesn't have the greatest coverage yet, but it's fun to play with. So let's dive in. So first things first, we need some HTML. So I stole, I mean, copied their SVGs from their site. And then I wrapped those in a div and gave those a unique class for each of them. And then I wrapped everything else in a div of itself and gave it a class. And for the CSS, to make a scrolling effect, we first have to make it to be able to scroll. So for the HTML and body, I just created a height of 200%. Just because we don't have a lot of content here, we need enough height to scroll. So setting it to 200, and then I'm setting the scroll behavior to smooth, just to smooth things out. So right now when we scroll, everything moves off the screen, but how we want it is we want it to stay in place and we want it to animate. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that our wrapping div has a position of sticky and a top of zero. Now this perspective we'll get to in a little bit, and that's just because we're zooming in and out in the 3D space. So now when we scroll, it stays in place. Next, let's animate the logo. First we need to make some keyframes, and we called it spin gear. So we're going to transform our logo, and we're going to start off at rotation of zero, and then we're going to push it back in the Z axis of 100 pixels. So translate 3D, you have an X, Y, and Z. And that's why we needed the perspective of 200. The Translate 3D won't work properly without that being there. And then we're going to rotate to 180 degrees and then move back in the Z axis to zero. Now we need to link this up to our gear or logo. I gave it a width of 251. This was just because the original width of the SVG was humongous. So I had to shrink it down a bit. Then we add an animation property. It'll take 2.5 seconds to animate. Then we ease in and out, it's moving forwards, and then we're applying the keyframes to this animation. So when you reload the site, the gear will animate 180 degrees and zoom in. Now the magic to make it animate when we're scrolling is using the animation timeline property, and then we're adding scroll to it. And what this does is as you scroll down, it steps through the animation frame by frame. So when you're at the bottom of the scroll, you're at 100% of the animation. And when you're at the top of the scroll, you're at the very beginning of the animation. You're just stepping through the keyframes. So if we look at the animation on the site, you'll see that as we're scrolling, the white arc rotates at a different speed than the, the blue gear. So let's add an animation for that. In our keyframes, we call this spin arc, and then we're rotating it from zero to 360 degrees. The transform margin is just defining where the center is for what is going to rotate around. And then we're selecting our SVG. There's a path. The SVG for the gear is quite long, but there's a path that has an attribute called data SVG origin. And we're just referencing that. And that, that's the, the white arc. And in our animation, it's the same as the gear, but we're referencing the spin arc this time. And then in our animation timeline, we're adding a scroll as well. So when we scroll, the arc animates as well. So if we look at our animation again, this time looking at the stroke, you can see that it just draws on. It's kind of like that fancy flourish at the end of your signature. But first thing we need to do is place a stroke on top of the gear. We can just do that by giving it a position of relative and shoving it up and giving it a higher Z index than the gear. Now we can animate the stroke. But we'll two different animations, one for zooming and one for actually drawing the stroke. The zoom is because the gear is zooming in and getting bigger. And we want the stroke to look the same size as it zooms in. So translate 3D, I have an X, Y, and Z. The X and Y, I was trying to line up the stroke so that it looked like it did on the site. And then the last value is for the actual zooming, which would be the same as what we did for the gear. So to start off, it's at negative 100. And then when it finishes the animation, it's at zero. 
Now to the actually do the, the drawing, we have the draw stroke animation and the magic sauce is the stroke dash offset. We're starting at 1444 pixels and then the dash offset when it's finished is for negative 1444 pixels. I just looked on the actual site to see what these values were. So the zoom we're gonna add to the, the strokes container and it's the same thing. We're the same animation that we're doing, but we're referencing stroke zoom and we're doing the scroll on the animation timeline. Lastly, we need to add an animation to the actual stroke and we're just adding the draw stroke with an animation timeline to scroll. And then we're adding a stroke dash array of 1444. And this is just so that our animation works. So how this is actually working, we're just creating a dash line, but instead of having a lot of little dashes, we're having one big dash and one big space beside it. And then we're just moving the offset of the dash itself to animate the line on. And now when we scroll, it animates on. And that's the whole effect. It's not as quite as smooth as the other one because the other one uses JavaScript and, and has more of a delay to the animation. But for ease of use, you can't beat it. You just create an animation and then add this property and then you have an animated scroll effect. So I'll leave a link to this code pen in the description below. If you're looking for more CSS projects, be sure to check out some of our other videos. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.